The ATI slash AMD versus Nvidia debate has been going on for a pretty long time now, but the Linux community takes it to a whole other level. You see, this community is full of people who refuse to entertain the idea of using an Nvidia GPU in their system and blindly recommend that people switch to AMD, without considering the use cases in which Nvidia is clearly better. As a former Nvidia user who switched to AMD six months ago, I want to share my experience and hopefully convince you that things aren't so black and white, and that you should really really consider your use case before choosing which brand of GPUs to go with. Let us first consider the most important thing for the average gamer, performance. When it comes to performance, AMD and Nvidia are pretty close, as long as you don't enable ray tracing. Once ray tracing gets involved, Nvidia just wins hands down. That's the situation on Windows. On Linux? Oh boy. Things are really interesting on Linux. You see, Nvidia has ray tracing and DOSS support on Linux, while the ray tracing capable AMD GPUs can't even run ray tracing in the majority of cases. You might be able to get ray tracing going with the proprietary driver in some games, but the performance will be inferior to that of Nvidia in pretty much all cases. The open source driver does have some ray tracing support, but it doesn't work in all cases. And even when it does, it's literally the world's slowest ray tracing driver. So, I wouldn't even bother with ray tracing on AMD. So, as long as you don't want ray tracing, the performance is pretty much the same. But there is something else to consider. There is one advantage that AMD has always had over Nvidia, and that's the fact that AMD GPUs just have more VRAM. Why is this important, you might ask? Well, games are becoming more and more VRAM hungry every year. So, having more VRAM basically makes a GPU more future-proof. You know the saying that AMD GPUs age like fine wine? Well, I believe it has to do with the fact that they've always had more VRAM. Back in the day, I always had to upgrade my Nvidia GPUs because they didn't have enough VRAM. The most painful case was with my GTX 690. It had plenty of GPU power, but nowhere near enough VRAM, so new games just stuttered horribly on it. If you look at the new AMD and Nvidia GPUs, you see that Team Red has the VRAM advantage. Even the GeForce RTX 3080 Ti has 4 gigabytes of VRAM less than the RX 6800 XT. So if you want a more future-proof GPU and don't mind RTX being always off, then just go with AMD. Now let's talk about features. In short, Nvidia wins, and it's honestly not even remotely close. Nvidia's proprietary driver has ray tracing that actually works. And on top of that, Nvidia GPUs support every single technology AMD GPUs do, and more, like DOSS and the NVENC encoder. On the topic of encoders, it's time for me to talk about the absolute worst part of the AMD experience for me. Hardware encoding. It sucks on AMD. You see, while Nvidia has NVENC, which we can all agree is amazing for recording and streaming gameplay, AMD have AMF and VAPI. First, AMF. You need the proprietary driver to actually be able to use it. But the proprietary driver generally gives you worse performance than Mesa in games. So I just never bothered with AMF. Penguin from the future here. I did bother with AMF and found a way to use it in OBS without having to run the game I'm recording with the proprietary driver, and the results are pretty good. I will be making a video on that soon. Next is Vapi. This thing sucks. It's awful, and there is not a single good thing about it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So first is OBS. You can go to OBS, choose Vapi, set your bitrate, and start recording. Simple, right? No. If you record at anything, and I mean anything, above 1080p 60fps, the encoder will get overloaded and your video will look like this. Yeah, I think it's clear why this is unusable in OBS. Well, unusable for recording gameplay at least. I can use it for streaming, since it has no issues recording and streaming at 1080p or 720p, as long as the GPU usage is below 100%. So that's something, I guess. Recording gameplay with X264 is a solution, however it's far from being a good one, since X264 tends to destroy your frame rate in games that are even slightly CPU bound. Luckily, there is a solution. It's a scuffed solution, which involved me writing my own script, which records two separate files. One is the video file, and the other one is the audio file, and I had to write a 
a second script to put those two files together. Yeah, I had to mess around with FFmpeg flags for literal days in the command line before I managed to find the right combination of flags which give me video that's not a fucking slideshow. But the result is good. I get good quality video and the performance hit is between 1 and 5 FPS at most. Does this mean that recording gameplay with the hardware encoder on an AMD GPU is a good experience? No. No one in their right mind would say it is. I shouldn't have to do shell scripting just to record some gameplay. On my old NVIDIA card, I just opened OBS, chose NVENC, and set my bitrate. That's all I had to do. Took me 30 seconds and I was able to record good quality gameplay. On AMD, I had to spend 5 days reading documentation and writing shell scripts just so I can make VAPI encoding usable. Basically, if you do any kind of content creation which involves recording and streaming gameplay, avoid AMD GPUs like the plague. Now, let's talk compatibility desktop experience and out-of-the-box experience. First thing I have to note is that AMD doesn't support HDMI 2.1, so if you use that a lot, just stay away from AMD. That said, I think AMD has the overall advantage when it comes to compatibility. You see, Nvidia's Wayland support is still kind of terrible. Work has been done recently to improve it, but if you really want to use Wayland instead of Xorg, then AMD is the way to go. When it comes to games, one of the AMD drivers is funded by Valve, so it will play nicely with things like Proton. You also have two different AMD Vulkan drivers which you can have on your system at the same time. So, if one of them doesn't work with the game you're trying to play, one of the other two probably will. On the Nvidia side of things, well, you only get one driver that gives you acceptable performance and if that driver doesn't work in the game you want to play, well, you're out of luck. This is a win for AMD. The desktop experience is also a win for AMD in my opinion. AMD drivers come with most Linux distributions out of the box and you will never encounter issues with screen tearing, something very common on Nvidia setups. Well, it's not that difficult to fix on Nvidia, but it's extra work a user shouldn't have to put in. And the fix does come with a slight performance hit. A lot of modern Linux distributions automatically install the Nvidia proprietary driver for you, but most don't. So you do have to put in the effort to install the proprietary NVIDIA drivers in most cases, which can be a bit of a pain depending on which distro you're using. I remember that it was a pain on Debian 9, but rather simple on Arch Linux, so your mileage may vary. Overall, when it comes to out-of-the-box experience and the desktop experience, AMD wins. So, at the end of the day, there are a lot of things going for both AMD and Nvidia, so you should consider your use case very carefully before choosing which brand to go with. Don't take your advice from an old meme and forget about things like brand loyalty. Nvidia and AMD are just companies that want your money, so you gain nothing from being loyal to either of them. Them. And the GPUs they sell you are just tools. Pick the right tool for the right job. This is all I had to say. Feel free to share your thoughts regarding this topic in the comment section and see you in the next one.